Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the Coco Nomad channel where I talk about working remotely and digital nomadism, sharing information and inspiration to help you live the best life you can wherever you want to be. And so today's topic, I wanted to get into something that's been happening to me. I've seen it a lot more recently. It's not necessarily just happening to me, but I've seen it quite a bit. And it's travel shaming or travel guilt, if you want to call it that. Uh, I've made some posts uh, recently in social media and I've seen uh, some different responses. And I've seen a few instances of this in the past, but I didn't really think much about it until recently. And then I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's also a digital nomad and writes and has a company around travel. And we started talking about this and sort of like the rise. And so I thought about this and I wanted to just sort of explore some of the reasons for why I'm seeing more of this sort of travel shaming happening. And, and, and for me, I think it, it boils down to uh, three different categories. And so in those categories, basically someone will post something or ask a question, and then the response will be something that is not really informative, not really helpful. It's more sort of like, you know, why are you doing this? How dare you? Or something like that. So uh, I'll just dive into the different types. And the first type, I think, is the one that's most prevalent right now. And it really started last year. And it makes sense that it would happen. And that's the pandemic. Uh, travel guilt. So it's basically if you post something, show yourself traveling in a different location, um, you'll see a lot of responses. I've seen a lot of responses to even posts that I've made about why aren't you wearing a mask and why are you traveling right now and things of that nature. And so it's important that when you see those kinds of things that, you know, you, you take it in context. You know, there are a lot of people here who aren't traveling and don't think other people should travel in any way or form. And we are a little bit over a year of, of, since the pandemic hit and really has taken its effect on the world. So uh, I am a person who had spent most of last year living in Medellin where I didn't go anywhere. I was basically indoors, didn't go outside. Uh, fortunately, in my building, I had a, a access to a roof and things and I could go up and uh, be get air and, and, and exercise and do things like that. But for quite a long time, we were just on total lockdown. And it oscillated between being locked down and opening up and, and back and forth. And now to the point that when I left, it was pretty much open with the exception of maybe a few bars and some nightclubs. Uh, after that, I did come back to the U.S. to visit briefly. And I had a video about that talking about my travel plans the remainder of 2020. And now I'm located here in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And I see a lot of similarities. I, I think when I'm coming there's definitely protocols when traveling that are here to. Um, there are protocols and safety measures while I'm out and about in the stores. When you walk in, they take your temperature. I wear a mask. Uh, so when and that's the one thing about social media can sometimes be a little misleading. Most of the time, like I've asked outdoors at the beach, it's wide open. There probably aren't, you know, there's a few of us. But I've done a couple of photos where I'm like standing next to five or six people and we took our masks off just for the photo. Or when you see sit, sit in, a, in a restaurant in a group, you take your mask off to eat. I mean, it's pretty much everywhere I've been. So it's one of those things where it's just like, I think there's this idea of like, why can't you stay home? And in my instance, it's like, where is that? Like, I'm a digital nomad. I don't live in one place, so I am going to move around. Now, I don't move around as frequently, but it's not really because of the pandemic. It's more that after a number of years of doing this, I've started to sort of develop my own style. I'm more of a slow mad, if you will. So I tend to spend between one to three months in any given location, sort of bouncing around like a backpacker, exploring a bunch of different countries for one or two weeks at a time. It just really isn't like my jam. Now, I'll do that. Uh, certain times of the year, but it's more of like when I'm in vacation mode when I'll do that. So in that way, I don't really feel the guilt and the shame, but I do know some other people who travel a little more frequently. A lot of them are doing it for work. And there are a few people who are just traveling because they want to travel and they can. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. Uh, so I sort of take it with a grain of salt when I see those. Uh, the second one is the one that I'd seen prior. I had done a post uh, probably about two years ago and uh, about my total amount of travel, all the miles and all the places that I had been. And so at the bottom of the graphic had a total number of miles. And I kind of got the uh, environmental travel shaming uh, form, which was, you know, why are you using planes? And this consumes a lot of resources and you should travel. And interestingly enough, the person that, uh, that I saw that from initially was a person who travels far more than I do. And I was just like, well, that's pretty ironic that I'm going to get 
you know, this kind of response from someone who's actually logged in far more miles than me. So I didn't really get it. Uh, I think one of the things is just sort of like, it's a little bit easier to look outward at what other people are doing. And then that number in total also probably was staggering for such a short period of time for me. It was over the course of, at that point, about three and a half years of me traveling around the world uh, and living in different countries. Uh, in that regard, though, I, I sort of think about it in terms of like how I travel and again, how frequently I travel. I'm a slow mad, so I'm not taking flights every week. In fact, I flew more when I had a job in the U.S. and I was doing a lot of teaching and consulting. I was on a plane two to three times every single week. I had multiple flights and, and things of that nature. So I was definitely using that, uh, though, you know, whatever carbon footprint the air, airplanes had. I was doing that a lot more frequently than I ever was, than I, than I have since I've been traveling internationally. It's just the flights are longer. I'm, I'm spending more time in the air and covering more miles, but I'm not flying nearly as often. And I don't own a car. I don't drive. I, I don't have a scooter. Uh, when I live in cities, I prefer to walk. So I am conscious of you know my impact on the environment, and I do certain things. Uh, a lot of it just sort of fits my lifestyle and my preferred Way of travel, my preferred way of getting around. Anything less than 30 minutes, for instance, I'm walking, unless I'm late. Uh, I have to be there at a certain time. It's just my preference. I like to walk. I have some other things that I like to do, listen to podcasts and get other information while I'm walking. And I love to see the neighborhood. So these are ways that I sort of a, a deal with, with that. So I'm not super duper concerned with the environmental aspect in terms of the amount that I travel, but I think it is good to be conscious of like the impact of the things that you do. Um, not to the point that you should allow people to sort of shame you, but at least be aware of, of how and, and when and how much you're traveling in that regard. And then the final one is the one that I really see a lot of. It's uh, I'm in a, quite a few sort of travel groups on Facebook and some other locations. And it's weird uh, when I hear this one because this is the one that doesn't seem like they're guilting you or shaming you when it happens. But then it's just like, wait a minute, what did you just say? Um, and that's the financial uh, guilt. And it's it's sort of, it, it comes in the, in the form of the kinds of seats that you fly in, whether you book first class or whether you book coach, um, how often, again, you're traveling, if you're staying in resorts and staying in nicer ones. And for someone like me, who's just constantly in, you know, out of my home country and just living, it comes in the form of this sort of, it must be nice. And it's not like a compliment. And when saying it in like a, like it's almost like in a derisive way. It's just like really weird. So it's like the shaming you into like feeling guilty for being able to live the life that you want. And this is the one that I really push back on because I'm like, I had the kind of life for a number of years that people said I should have. I got the house, I had the car, I did the whole family thing. And I spent a lot of time working a job. And, and, and so life was supposed to be good. But I realized at one point that it just wasn't for me anymore and decided to make a change. And I don't think in any of those instances, you should feel guilty about it. You, you have the opportunity to make the life that you want to make and you should. And so I just want to encourage anyone who's dealt with these different types of shaming to separate the uh, legitimate concerns about, you know, pandemic or environmental impact, things of like that nature. But then there's certain ones that just quite frankly, just, you just ignore it and just keep moving. Um, don't let me, people can't spend your money. I always tell people all the time, I can't chew your food for you, you know? And so it's just the thing where it's like certain things you just have to do for yourself and you just have to, to, to be mindful and move forward on the path that you've chosen for yourself. Now, I'm a big proponent of not doing harm to other people. So I keep that at the forefront of my mind. Um, but regardless, I'm going to make the life and enjoy the life that I have and have the ability to have and I'll continue to work that way. So in the comments, uh, just have you encountered these kinds of travel shaming or, or, or these types or have you encountered other types of travel shaming that you've seen and how do you handle it? How do you handle those situations when people confront you uh, to either guilt and shame about how, where and when you're traveling? Um, also, if you have any other topics that you'd like me to talk about, please feel free to drop them in the, uh, in the comment section. Again, like and subscribe and please share. If you find this channel of any use and if you think it could help someone else, I'll continue to make videos. Have an amazing day and keep on doing what you're doing. Cheers.